everyone. It is Sunday school time, and I'm going to get myself together. It is Lady B, and I am so excited about this lesson on today. I was going to put it on there, but they keep giving me copyright claims. But that song Myrna Summers used to sing, I like her version. I don't think she wrote the song, but I like her version about the uncloudy day, because today we're going to be talking about the details of this new city, the new city that John saw. I am excited to know that when Jesus said in St. John 14 and 6 that he was going away to prepare a place for me, he meant that. And so what John is discussing in Revelation chapter 21 is that place that has been prepared for all those, as it says, who love his appearing. And I pray that you are one of the people that are looking to the skies. You're looking up expecting the coming of the Lord, expecting the end of all things to happen so that we can eternally be with the Lord. So we're going to get into our lesson on today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, I ask that you would subscribe. Be sure to like and to comment and please share. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We're so honored to be able to go through your word on today. Thank you that all of your promises are yes and amen. Lord, we are just so excited about this city that John described the best of his ability. It was good enough for us to be excited and we love you and we bless you in your matchless name. We are in um, Revelation, the book of Revelation. We are still in Revelation chapter 21. Um, it's verses 10 through 21. And if you notice, I did say Revelation. It's not Revelations. John got one revelation. The Lord gave him a, a revelation. We were in um, Revelation chapter 21 on last week. And this whole theme is talking about the great hope of the saints. You know, I want to um, keep challenging us. You know, as we see the day of, of the coming of the Lord, when we talk about the rapture and the Lord um, snatching away his believers, and we talk about the end times with the, the tribulation and the battle of Armageddon and, 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 and the, the thousand year millennial reign, and then the end of all things and the new heaven and the new earth, I pray that those truths um, those realities are motivating us to live in such a way that this might be the day. This might be the hour that the Lord comes to snatch away his own. Now, you know, some people get a drink of water here. Some people, um, they don't believe in the rapture. You know, and some people do. And some people believe that the rapture is going to occur. Um uh, the, at the midpoint, the, the the first three and a half, at the end of the first three and a half years, some people believe the rapture is going to occur at the end of the seven years. Some people believe that there's going to be a partial rapture where all the people that were ready are going to go and the people that weren't ready, they still got to be here for a little while and be purged some more and then they're going to go. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue about that. I will say, be ready. Because sooner rather than later, we're all going to be proven right <laughs> or wrong. Because I do believe that, and I believe what I believe. But, you know, uh, Peter, Paul clearly said that we all see through a glass darkly. So, uh, as I said before, sooner rather than later, one of us is going to be proven wrong. So, as we look at our lesson on today, as we look, as we look at our lesson on today. Um, again, like I said, we are in Revelations chapter 21, verses um, 10 through 21. And I want to go through this through the New Living Translation. I was going to read the scripture, but I want to try to make sure this is not too long. But I want to go through the New Living Translation um, so I'll be able to flow better and, and, and really kind of expound on it. I, I want to share... Um, I want to share some slides here. 
this slide here, we see here where Ezekiel, we see here where Ezekiel um, in his vision was talking about the temple that was in the city. And there are 12 gates around the city, just like it talks about the 12 gates in the city um, of the New Jerusalem. And the name of the city that Ezekiel said is the Lord is there. Now, but now in, in John's revelation, it's the throne of God is going to be there. I, I want to point out that uh, it has always been God's desire to be in fellowship with his people. And during the millennium, um, it's another dispensation where man is going to be given the opportunity to get it right. And of course, we're going to blow it. Um, but during the millennium, um, God won't be reigning there. Jesus will be there. He will physically be there. He will be the king. He and David will be reigning. And um, there is going to be a physical temple there where sacrifices are being made. One of the reasons for that is what God establishes, it must come to pass. And they never did right with the temple. Um, and so he's going to have this temple during the time of the millennium. And it's going to be the Lord is there. That's the name of the city. The Lord is there. So 12 gates, um, 12 gates of New Jerusalem. And I kind of wanted to go through these gates because I think it's significant for us to see the difference between um, the old city and the new city. When Nehemiah, when they built the temple, they had all these gates, the sheep gate, the fish gate, the old gate, the valley gate, the dung gate, the fountain gate, the water gate, the horse gate, the east gate, and the inspection gate. I, I want to talk about this because remember what we have in the new Jerusalem. The one that keeps hitting me more than anything else is, is the dung gate. Now, we all know what dung is. And remember in this new city that um, we're going to be in, that God is going to make, it's going to be pure. It's going to be holy. There will be no defilement. So what we see here in this new Jerusalem is the, the Jerusalem purged. Um, this is a, another depiction of the temple. There was the lightning gate and the firstborn gate and the water gate and the women's gate and the general entrance gate and the beautiful gate. Um, the upper gate, the Jeconiah gate, the flame gate, the sacrifice gate. They had all these gates that, that, that served different purposes. But I can promise you that none of those gates were pure. None of those gates were holy. Within those gates, somebody impure could come through them. Now, they may not be able to make it here. You see my pointer here. In the most holy place, you know what I'm saying? They may not have made it past the brazen altar and so forth, but they were able to come into these other gates. I mean, you know, so, cause see they have here the chamber of the lepers. And so uh, there were other people that were able to come to the gate, but there's coming a time, excuse me. There's coming a time, it won't be like in Matthew chapter 13, where, um, where Jesus said, uh, let the wheat and the tares grow together. And I'm going to do the dividing. I'm going to do the sifting because right now everybody kind of looks the same. So when we when we look at our scripture in verse eight, it says no cowards, no unbelievers, no corrupt, no murderers, nobody immoral, nobody who practices witchcraft or idol worship and all liars. They will not be in the new the Jerusalem. And then in verse nine, after he stated that, he says, um, and you remember, and I'm going to say it, in chapter 20 is when they had the, um, the, the, the second death judgment, if I can call it like that, that everyone whose name was not written in the book of life, um, they went into hell, which was thrown into the lake of fire. So, when Jesus is giving John this chapter 21, you know, it is, it's still a vision. It's in John, it's, it's, it's yet to come, but it was good news to John considering all that he had been shown about what would happen in the last days. 
I mean, just to think about even after a thousand years of Jesus being on the earth, people are still going to rebel when Satan is loosed from the bottomless pit. That's just, that had to be mind blowing to John. You know, even when we read Revelation, we struggle with reading it. Can you imagine struggling with writing it? Like, like, did I really see that? You know, and he's being shown things in the future. So then the angel says, John, I want you to come with me in verse nine. I want to show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. So the angel takes him in verse 10 up to a great mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like Jasper is clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Can you imagine seeing this city coming down to earth and you trying to describe its magnificence? You know, John was doing the best he could to describe what he was seeing. So I just can't imagine how much more splendid it's actually going to be. He was limited in his descriptions, in his words. It's kind of like when we say, if I just had the words to express my gratitude. That's how it was with John trying to express or describe this beautiful city. So I got a question for you. Can you name... I don't know what's going on with this throat this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you name the 12 tribes of Israel? I tested myself to see if I could do it. Do you know the 12 tribes? Can you name at least one, maybe two? How far did you get? Three, four, five? How far did you get? I did pretty good. I want you to know. I want you to know that I was able to name all the tribes without looking. I got all 12. So there was Asher and Dan and Zebulun and Naphtali and Judah and Benjamin and Simeon and Gad and Levi and Issachar and Joseph and Reuben. A lot of times you will see Ephraim. And if you remember, Ephraim was one of Joseph's sons. So Ephraim, because remember, um, in the book of Genesis, when Jacob was blessing his children, when Israel was blessing his children, Joseph's portion went to his two sons, to Ephraim and to Manasseh. And that's where you see that there. But I just put Joseph there. So these were uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. And then what about, um, what about, let's, let's, let's get another picture here. If you see here in this picture, you see the angel measuring and the pearl for a gate. I just, I can't imagine. And remember all of these depictions are just efforts. They're just attempts to even kind of halfway imagine what was John was really seeing. So we see the angel, we see the pearl gate, we see an angel, and then we see the names of the tribes of Israel here up above the gate. And then down here at the bottom, you can see my cursor here. Down here at the bottom, we see um, in Hebrew, the names of the apostles. Do you know Do you know their names? Can you, besides Peter, everybody knows Peter and John and James. Do you know any others? Andrew and um, who else? Judas, everybody knows Judas, right? And there was a James. And Philip, very good. So we have Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and Simon and Thaddeus and James and Judas. So we have two Judases. Okay, so those were the 12. And you know, this signifies how we know that the gospel that we now uh, are following, the foundation was the apostles teaching and Jesus Christ was the cornerstone. So he, and he told them that they were going to be re um, reigning. And Paul tells us that they are the foundation. So we see here that God never changed his mind about that. And so their names are etched on the foundation of the new Jerusalem. Um, you know, all of this is just so, it's, 
that is just magnificent. Like, how do you, how do you, I don't, I, I don't know. This is one of those lessons where you just have to just say, this is what the Bible says. This is another picture here. I thought this was so beautiful. If you see this red arrow here, you re I know you can't really see it, but in this stone, it says Peter. At each one of these, the disciples' names are etched in those stones. That lets me know how precious these apostles were to Jesus and their willingness to follow him. And 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 because he said, follow me. And they turned, the Bible says they gave up everything and they followed Jesus. And each one of these apostles, um, they died a martyr's death, except for John. And a lot of them died horrific deaths, but they would not recant their belief. They would not go against this gospel that they have been given and they're being honored for that so i just i just love this picture too because you see here at the arch here you see that that name judah you remember the bible says that the name of the tribes is above the gate so judah here they have it in, in hebrew and then this pearl that is the door to the gate, but we know that the pearl doesn't sit in, in front of the gate to close it because the gates never close. Because remember, gates were for security. And remember, we just read all the folks that would cause insecurity, they're not there. So this is just, you know, again, these are just depictions, but just, just to even try to imagine what John saw just to even try to imagine it. It's it's really beyond anything that, that we can do, but just to know that it's waiting for us, it makes whatever we go through here on this earth, it makes it so worthwhile. So in verses 15 through 17, the angel who talked to me, he held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates and its walls. And when he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by an angel. So now um, we had this slide here last time. So we, we see that the size of this New Jerusalem, this city, it, it, it pretty much covers all of the main line, land or continental United States of America. It's huge. It is huge. You know, but even still in your thinking, you're, you're wondering, um, will everybody fit? I'm quite sure Everybody is going to fit. I want to read this. A city of this size is too large for the imagination to take in. John is certainly conveying the idea of splendor and more importantly, that of room for all. L. Morris. Henry Morris, guessing that there would have been 100 billion people in the human race through history and that 20% of them will be saved calculated that each person would have a block with about 75 acres on each face to call their own. This is highly speculative, but illustrates the point that there is plenty of room in the new Jerusalem. So we don't know when Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you and in my father's house are many mansions. And when you do the word study on the word mansion, we find out that it's not necessarily a building like what we think with bedrooms and, and your nice living room and a big kitchen and all those things. But it's an abode. It's a, it's a place to dwell. And we know that through Christ Jesus, we can be wherever God is. So when he says, I'm going to prepare a place, basically, I'm going to die on the cross and make it possible for you to be where I am. And through the blood of Jesus, we're going to be able to be in this place. And remember, the Bible says that God is going to dwell there. And so since God is going to be dwelling there, we will be there. That will be our abode for all eternity. Okay, so the wall, okay, so we talked about the wall of the city being 216 feet thick. Now that's a thick wall. The wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold as clear as glass. Now I want to stress again, John is doing the best he can to describe something he has never seen before. How do you describe 
something that you've never seen before. You come as close as you can and you say, it's like, and that's what you keep John saying. John keeps saying, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like. So then he says the wall uh, was made of jasper, the city's made of gold, the third of the city, the wall of the city is built on foundation stones inlaid with 12 precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the sixth, seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about these stones, these beautiful, beautiful stones, pure stones, nothing um, to taint them, no, no, no marring, no anything. And the light of the S-O-N shining through them. The splendor of God shining. Can you just imagine? Imagine just being able to see that. I'm, it's like in my mind, God had to do something um, to, to John's eyes to be able just to even 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 in the spirit, see this magnificence and this beauty of all the, the, the glory of the Lord just shining through the stones. Because he said it was coming down like a bride. So in other words, this, this city was magnificent. It was beautiful. It was splendid. And he just sees all of these stones. And the 12 gates were made of pearls, each gate with a single pearl. And the main street was pure as gold. Now, remember, he was talking about because it's like a box. So, if the if the if the wall is about fourteen hundred miles high, then imagine how big these pearls were. You know, let's see if we can find the let's see if we can find the picture again and go back go back to the pearls. Now, we see the angel measuring here and. We see the gate and the angel here and this pearl. But if this is 1,400 miles high, that's a big pearl. You know what came to me? All this fighting we do over the material things here, when our Lord has told us the earth is his and everything that belongs in it. You know, when you think about this city and the gates are made of pearls, we're arguing about the wrong thing. We're fighting and killing over the wrong thing. None of this stuff is anything to God. We, we've we made it gods. We worship money and things and jewelry and, and nice cars and nice houses. But in, in God's economy, it, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to use the pearls for a gate. <laughs> Our foundations are cement. He said, ah. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some sapphire and emeralds and onyx and yeah, chrysolite and beryl and topaz. Yeah, let's make that the foundation. Do y'all do we all see what the Lord is really saying to us? This stuff that we're fighting over, God's got something so much greater for us, and it won't be long. It won't be long. And he said. The 12 gates, I'm going to read it one more time, were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl. And the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. Now, that's where the lesson starts or well, stops. And so that's where I am going to stop. But here we have this new city that is shining with the glory of God. I just want you to imagine all of this splendor. The Bible says there won't be no, there's no need for the sun or the moon or the stars because God is the light and God is going to be there. I know that's not part of our lesson, but I just, it's just so good. He said, I saw no temple for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. You know, sometimes when we pray and, and we're wondering if God is there, if, 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 if God is listening, and we, there's going to be a time when we won't even have to be guessing to know if God is even listening. There won't be a time 
there won't be a time when we will have to go into the temple or offer a sacrifice or go to church and fall at the altar. John said, I didn't even see a temple for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Where we go to worship, where we would go to find the presence of God, he is going to be there. It will no longer be faith. It will all be sight. No need of the sun, no need of the moon for the glory of God illuminate. So just imagine the, the, the creator of all the universe, his glory is hitting this gold and hitting these pearls and hitting all of these beautiful stones. Just imagine the splendor. Imagine how he's pulled everything together. Every tribe, every nation is going to be there. How Israel, he kept his word to Abraham. Their name is over the, the doors of the gates. Because remember, it was through Israel we had to find access. Because remember, they weren't the ones and we were grafted in. And God allowed them to, to, to be ignorant for a season so that we Gentiles could come in. And then he honored them and he honored the Gentile nations and he honored the apostles. And so we now all are coming together as one in this new city, this new Jerusalem where nothing unclean. Verse 27, nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So, you know, as I close, I got to say this as I close. Let's make sure that we know Jesus Christ. Do we know him? And then Let's be concerned about somebody else getting to know him. Let's not be so giddy and, and, and oh, I'm going to heaven. But then I have no concern for anyone else that's going. I, we want somebody else to go along with us. This is going to be good. I mean, you, can you imagine? Because, you know, it's very, it's, you know, when God blesses us, even in our finite lives, uh, when he blesses us, we can't even find the words to describe. Man, I can't even describe how I feel about what God did. Man, he's been good. Lord, I thank you. You know, we try to come up with words and we can't come up with words to describe um, what he's done. So can you imagine in our lesson on today, John was doing the best he could to describe what, we, what he saw. But we know we know that what he saw, what he tried to describe, doesn't really tell us what it's going to be like. But it gives us a taste. Girl, you, I saw this movie. It was so good. How good was it? You know what? I can't, it was just good. You're going to have to go see it for yourself. You, girl, you need to taste this pie. You're going to have to experience it for yourself. That's what I think about when I think about the new city. I, I need to I need to see it for myself. I appreciate, John, what you have said. I know what you shared with us was by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, but I'm sure you you didn't really do it justice like it's going to be. I, I'm just sure of that. <laughs> I'm just sure of that. You know why I'm sure of that? Do you remember Matthew 17 when Jesus allowed um, the, the veil to be taken down and Peter, James, and John experienced his glory? Remember, it caused them to fall to the ground. That's what I, I think that there's so much more glory. I just... I just think that there's more glory. And John was showing all of these beautiful things. And I, I'm not saying he didn't do a good job. So please, please don't judge me. I'm not saying John didn't do a good job. John gave us an excellent description so that we would have our appetites wet so that we will want to say, I must go see it for myself. And I'm challenging us to take someone else along with us. Let's not just talk about heaven. Let's not just talk about heaven. And um, we don't have anybody else with us. Let's want somebody else to go with us. Let's say, hey, neighbor. Hey, friend. 
Hey, sister and brother, let me tell you about heaven. Let me tell you about this beautiful place. I see those tears rolling down your eyes, but oh, the Lord Jesus that loves you and died for you, he has prepared a place. Not only can he wipe the tears away here, but I got to tell you, you're going to cry again here. But oh, if you will come to Jesus, there's going to be a day that there will be no more tears, no more pain, and no more sorrow. Don't you want to go with me? Don't you want to go with me to that land? Come go with me to that land. That's what we want to say to folks. That's what I want to say to you. All right, I'm done. I pray that encouraged you. I pray it made some sense. Praise the Lord. Please remember to subscribe and to and to like. Click that reminder button if you want, um, if you inclined to follow me and see what else God has given me to say. Well, sometimes my little kooky ways. Praise the Lord. But I love the Lord. I love his word. And I am so appreciative that you would stop in and, and give me some time to hear what the Lord has given to me about the word of God. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. So let's remember, let's not fight over the things that are temporal of this world because our great God uses precious stones to make foundations. That's the God that we serve. So you be blessed in Jesus name and I will see you next week. We will be in Revelation chapter 22. Be blessed.